What's going on, Pokemon Go trainers? Welcome to episode 103 of Lured Up, the podcast where we take Pokemon Go way more seriously than we do ourselves. Lured Up is part of the Pokemon Professor Network. Today is Sunday, November 3rd, 2019. I'm your host, Ken Pescator, joined by my co-hosts, Adam Tuttle and Melissa Pescator. What's up, guys? Hi, friends. Oh, hey. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Hey. Hey. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. Yeah. What's hey. going on? <laughs> and our special guest today. Because we're, you know, we, we, we're, we're always having friends over to play. We have lots of play dates here. <laughs> we have, we've got Reese, Disney gamers in the house. How are you, man? Hello. Thank you for having me. I'm great. Thank you. That's so good, man. I'm so, I'm so glad to have you on. I, I, I can't wait to talk because I think it's an interesting way. Um, what, what you're doing is it's, it's cool that you have a, a different approach to, to what creating can be in this space. And I think that's really mm. cool. Uh, and I definitely want to dig into that in just a bit. But I do have a little housekeeping really quick. This podcast is powered by Patreon. Please check ours out over at patreon.com slash Pokemon Professor, where you can support this show for as little as $1 a month. And that $1 will get you access to our patron-exclusive Discord, which is a fantastic place filled with fantastic people. It sure is. And if Patreon isn't your thing, you can help us out. Uh, a couple other ways. If you're listening on YouTube, you can subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. If you're listening via a podcast service like Apple Podcasts, you can take a moment to leave us a review. Five stars are the bestest of the stars. All right. On today's show, we're going to get to know Disney Gamer, talk about everything he's got going on in the world of Pogo. We got a bunch of uh, updates directly from Niantic via their PokemonGoLive.com blog and update page. Uh, there's research breakthrough rotation. We've got our next tier five boss. We've got more Willow reports. Uh, this Team Rocket stuff is coming to a head. So very exciting to see what happens. I'm sure as soon as we hit stop on the recording tonight, they'll drop all the news of what what's going to happen with that special research. But I'm sure we'll see if that actually rolls out this week. Like, like it always They does. love that. They love that. It's, yeah, the typical Monday news drop. Uh, we're going to recap the Colossal Discovery event uh, and special research that came along with it. Uh, we have our, you know, Cobalion is the, Ray, you know, Ray Guide and Battle Party. We're going we're gonna to battle party it up, yo. It's been a couple weeks, so we'll, we got to get back on the whoop whoop tip. Uh, we've got a couple of community emails and voicemails, and I do want to have a discussion very interesting discussion about some stuff that went down with Pokemon Master Holly over the past week. Uh, that's definitely worth talking about. Something something differently uh, outside of the box and uh, interesting. So we'll get into that convo a little bit. But first, we're going to meet Disney Gamer. Reese, why don't, why don't you introduce yourself, man? Let us know uh, who you are, where you're from, and uh, kind of what you do in this space. Um, okay, so my name is Reese, also known as Disney Gamer Online. Uh, I'm pretty much a artist when it comes to Pokemon Go. I like to create what shiny pokemon will look like to help people know what they're looking for and occasionally i like to create future generation edits so people can get hyped for what's to come i'm from the uk originally but i'm currently living in macau which is near hong kong uh, so i travel around quite a bit and i've recently started working for mystic 7. wow it's do, you've cool. had this awesome trajectory made like you've always like i just i i've heard the name Disney gamer for so long, and I, I gotta ask, like, what's the the thing with Disney? Are you like a, a Disney buff, or is, how, how did that whole name come about? <laughs> well, basically, about six seven years ago, when I created my Instagram, um, I was very into the game which is known as Disney Infinity. Yes. Um, oh, and I really threw myself into that, doing fan art and everything, and doing basically what I do now, but uh, creating concept art for future things to come. And I got kind of popular with the name that I had and some of the friends that I build up, like um, Legendary Kachinos, uh, Heather, as you know, who did the girls that PvP, uh, yes. we became almost like family through that. Um, so a lot of my friends who I've made through that also still know me as that now in Pokemon. Um, but towards the end of that sort of genre, uh, I was actually commissioned to do some work with Disney. Uh, and at the time that was like my dream, you know, I was fresh out of college. I'd just been commissioned by Disney to do some work. I was living the high life, but yeah, sadly, the, yeah. <laughs> the, sadly, the, uh, the game went bankrupt before, uh, anything could sort of process any further. So I was very guided about it, but at the same time, that was when Pokemon had just dropped. Uh, so I sort of turned all my attention to Pokemon and was like, okay, let's see what I can do with this. And 
things just sort of took off from there. That's uh, that's awesome. So just to give you a little backstory uh, on me and, and Adam, too, and that's how I met Adam. So uh, Adam and I are both massive, massive Toys to Life fans. Like, we were, oh, we awesome. were all about Skylanders, Lego Dimensions. Uh, mm. We worked with um, a podcast called Toys for Games, which was... I, I do um, believe I heard that, yeah. I was the community manager for Toys for Games. Adam was a fan of Toys for Games. The host from Toys for Games, Josh Brown, is now the host of the Special Conditions podcast on this network, the TCG podcast. So we've we've been in that space forever. Like we're all mm. about like we have Toys to Life stuff everywhere. You yeah, know, my house it's, is still it's filled. just all all <laughs> like yeah, <same>. so. <laughs> you know, we you know it was Jason and Choirs was uh, you know the, one of the co-hosts of the podcast with Josh Brown, and that that community was amazing. So. Uh, yeah, I was I was all about that, and I've met so many people through Toys to Life, and uh, that's actually how I you know met Adam, and then brought him in to do some Pokemon stuff because I knew he was a Pokemon fan, but I only knew him through Toys to Life, so it's a uh, it's definitely a cool trajectory. So I I knew you know I kind of set you up on that question because I knew you came from that space. So, but um, that's super <laughs> cool, man, because uh, you know I, no, I always have awesome. a, a very soft spot for for all things Toys to Life. You know, even you know, am- Amiibo is like, you know, the, 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 how it's kind of lived on. But I mean, like, you know, Adam just brought same. Starlink over. You know, he brought <laughs> Starlink to my house. My son's obsessed with Starlink now. So it's like, you know, we've, you know, we've got every Skylander, every Lego dimension. It's just absolute, absolute madness. Melissa knows. It's, all, it's everywhere. <laughs> oh, my God. Walls of it. Walls. <laughs> yes. Tons. T- tons of stuff but so what's your what's your kind of uh your your relationship with the pokemon franchise at large like was it just pokemon go or did you have kind of a connection to the franchise prior to that not really any connections i was mainly just you know a fan like everybody else um i played pokemon blue on my game boy when i was a child and i've played every pokemon game since then but once pokemon go came out that was I don't know, it was just different, you know, you could it was the closest thing that we've had yet to feeling like a proper Pokemon trainer. And I think that's what got the world so hyped. So when I saw there was such a big following behind this, I was like, Oh, this is great. Not many of my friends are into Pokemon anyway, but this has brought a lot of them to uh the scene. Um so seeing a lot of my friends get into it, that made me more hyped and fueled for doing it. So that was uh, very shortly after the game was out, I was already thinking about, okay, what can they do to make this game better? Uh, what can I start designing and putting out there to sort of help? Uh, and that's what I still do now. If there's a certain feature that I think we could have, or there's a certain Pokemon that I feel we should have at a certain time of year, I will put it out there because I know because I know that it will gain traction. People start sharing it, talking about it. And I also know that I have certain members of Niantic following me on Twitter, so I know <laughs> what a lot of what a lot of the community comment and say is definitely not going unheard. Well, look, there's a ton of people that make custom stuff and do edits and all that, but the thing is, with your stuff, it looks except so organically legitimate, like. Like yeah. the, your, the your your color palette and the way you just normalize everything. It looks so accurate, like just ridiculously accurate to the point, like even where uh, in one of Mystic 7's last videos, and we'll, you know, we'll talk about Mystic 7 in a minute, but when you kind of uh, built out like an, the imagining of what the Go Battle League could be all about, like it looked so freaking legit, like it looked so official. I was like, wait, wait, how does he have all this info already? And I was like, oh shit, it's just this. It's just like a, you know, a, a concept that was like, this is freaking awesome. So it, it's really cool that that you're able to have that type of, uh, you know, like creative expression in with Pokemon. And, you know, it's it's just like a different way to engage creatively with the franchise, which I think is really cool because podcasting at large is even kind of outside of the box when it comes to how to be creative around you know, uh, a franchise or something like that. So when I hear, you know, people that are using art, uh, I think that's really cool. Now, have is your is your day job like, uh, you know, like do you do other work with graphic design, like, or is this kind of like a hobbyist thing that is turned into work? Well, I've always since I left uni, uh, I've always been doing graphic design sort of temporarily because I was never in the position to do it as a full-time job. I never wanted to sign up with, you know, a company or something. I didn't want to be sat at a desk 
you know, in in some office somewhere. I wanted to be able to be my own boss. I wanted to uh, basically make up my own hours when I wanted to work. Uh, yeah, and I, sounds and I, awesome. <laughs> and I wanted to still have my creative freedom. I didn't want to constantly have someone going, no, I wanted it like this, I wanted it like that. So I wanted to still be able to, like any artist, to show what you can do instead of always following a list of rules, what to do, what not to do. And for a few years, it was very slow. I wasn't making any money. You know, I was seeing a lot of my friends buying new cars, getting their first house, <laughs> and I was like, I really want this. Why is nothing happening? <laughs> and then one day I was just like, you know what? I need to just push myself out there. And at this point in time, uh, Pokemon Master Holly, she was on about 15,000 subscribers. So she she was still new, but I could see that she had potential. <laughs> I saw that she was doing great stuff. She was already doing videos with Nick, Brandon, all that. So I was like, okay, I'm going to see if I can help her out. So I hit her up. I was like, hey, would you like me to do anything for you? I can create you an intro, help you, you know, make a logo, whatever you want. And she came back and she really wanted me to get on board with helping to redo her logo for her. So I did that. And then from there on, she was just commissioning me for other projects whether it was merch whether it was animations for her videos and that was then she then passed me on to some other friends including Brandon and things to sort of snowboard from there that's everything awesome. fell right that, into place yeah. the, <laughs> that's like the essence of the community right there like reaching out pushing yourself connecting with that one person and letting it just snowball it was and that I seems mean, to be a lot of what has happened with these youtuber creators as well it is i mean watching brandon because i know obviously started in clash of clans um watching his original videos i could see how much he was traveling and how much he was trying to do and i was like ah oh, this would be awesome if i could get to the point where i'm editing for someone this would be amazing uh so when i first started talking to brandon uh, which was originally about doing some merch for him he was like, oh, yeah, I've been told about you. I was actually going to reach out to you myself. And I was like, oh, my God. That's so you cool. Know, <laughs> he, you know, at this point in time, he feels like a celebrity to me. So someone saying I was personally going to get in contact with you, I was like, this is crazy. So for about, probably for about 10 months, uh, I was working with Brandon doing merch, doing some uh, animated stuff for his channel. I was working on the Willow project uh, way before it was announced and I was like, I, I want to do more. I really want to do more. So I kept dropping hints to him. I was like, hey, you know, if you ever need help with videos, I'm here. <laughs> and then one day he was like, oh, I'm going to start up my Clash of Clans on my second channel again. Um, do, do you think you want to help out with that? And I was like, oh my God, yeah, sure. And I don't know anything about Clash of Clans, but yeah um, I'll happily do it so you know we negotiated all the business details and things and I did that for a couple of days and then he literally went you know what you're doing a great job do you want to do my Pokemon videos as well <laughs> oh, nice. and, uh, and, and, I, and I'll be honest I, f I felt kind of emotional at that point I was like this is crazy everything's coming together this is exactly what I wanted Aww. to do um, you know I'm, get, I'm getting the I'm doing what I love. I still have spare time for my family and things that I want to do. Uh, it's totally flexible. And, you know, I'm getting the money that I wanted to have, for, you know, as a as a wage. You know, I was really nervous that we weren't going to be able to negotiate things that I wanted and I was going to be too much or I was maybe going to charge too little. But everything worked out perfectly and I just couldn't be happier with the position Aww. that I'm in. That's what great, a, man. Wow. That's so what an positive. awesome story, dude. <laughs> but uh, but no, it is great because I feel like it's it's benefiting him as much as it benefits me because a lot of the edits that I do now, whether it's a shiny edit or like my latest one, the Corbalion edit, um, I'm getting these prepared, you know, because he's like, um, oh, I need this for a thumbnail, you know, the release is coming, I need to drop it, yeah, I, I, I want to be one of the first, and I'm like, okay, leave it with me, I'll get it done. Uh, and then as soon as he's posted it, I'm like, hey, here's my edit. I know I'm a little bit late now. I'm used to being like, you know, the first one to sort of post my edits. But to be honest, 
<laughs> having the audience that he has look at my work oh, yeah. still that, mm-hmm. that's still that's still an amazing feeling yeah that's that that that's what and the thing is too like his videos are not typical just like you know vlogs or sitting behind a, a a computer like he had a very distinct style you know he he was very yeah uh, you know the, the way that he carried the music through the videos the way he uh you know did sync work and panning shots and all that stuff like he had his own thing going and what i thought was really cool was your ability to kind of extend his vision of his style because he had the style and air about his videos but now you're doing the editing, but it still feels like he's doing a it. Mystic Seven video. Yeah, yeah, like, and I, that's got you know. Mm-hmm. How is that? Like, is how, how does it? How, what's the pro? I'm fascinated by the process. Do you just get like gigs and gigs and gigs of like raw clips, and you're just kind of like putting it together like a puzzle, <laughs> or do you guys like yeah, have pretty like much. scripts? <laughs> um. Well, basically, when we first started, uh, he gave me some test footage to see you know what I could do. Uh, and at that point in time, I had just finished another project that I did for him, which hasn't been released yet. Uh, but I, I'm sure it'd be fine me saying I did like a channel trailer for him. So it's like a, a it's like a minute or two's worth of, you know, videos from all over the years of him traveling and everything to make like this awesome channel trailer. So to make that, I had to go through, well. <laughs> a lot of videos and a lot of footage so i think by that point i knew exactly his style the sort of music that he he enjoys adding to his videos um so when he said you know here's some test footage show me what you can do i was already sort of in the mindset of what he wanted how he would do certain things and that was when uh i did the video and he was like that's crazy i love it and he was like if you want to put anything else like your your own little flares in there or anything that will just you know make it better feel free to do it and and you know we we communicate every day making sure you know things are right if there's a um, for example before he switched over to android iphone his screen recordings kept breaking and corrupting all the time <laughs> so he used to be ah oh, there's a screen recording down can you you know do something just to try and fill that gap and, so we it was it was very good the communication that we had but yeah so he basically just sends me a ton of files and it's like hey can i get this for tomorrow and I'm like, yeah no problem because i'm in asia and he's in america so when i wake up he's going to bed which works yeah. perfect so oh, when yeah. he's yeah. when he's going to bed he that's when he uploads all the files so it's the morning for me while the files are uploading i go out play pokemon for a bit come back by lunchtime start editing and then by the time i'm done he's about waking up but the video yesterday that he's just posted, I think that was a total of about 110 clips. That was Oof. one of the longest ones yet. Wow. wow. Um, and that, that took all day to do. <laughs> the one thing is that, I, that I, I really do like, too, that you've added to the videos is he breaks the fourth wall now and, like, talks to you through the camera yeah, and it's like the that. funniest shit and it'll, it'll you know or he'll say like hey reach me up put a counter on the screen you know or something like that and it's like he, i i <laughs> that kind of transparency of you know hey guys yeah you know i have an editor you know because that's like a, a huge deal for a creator like when even in the podcast space you know when i talk to uh some other podcasts that have you know, they have audio editors and it's just like, oh, it's the fucking greatest thing in the world. It's like a, a, a godsend. It's the, you know, a lifesaver. So it's like I can imagine as a creator how awesome that is. But being actually part of the narrative, you know, to a certain extent is got to be really cool because you're, you know, you're popping up little things here and there or correcting him if he says something wrong with text. It's like I was like, this is so cool. Like the videos feel so much more. Uh, alive you know they, they're they really fleshed out like that and i love when he breaks the fourth wall i think that's that's super cool it's definitely i do fun. i love that as well um because <laughs> w- when he first gave me the job uh i was like you know you don't understand how honored i feel for this you know it's not just like an everyday editing job this is your career that you're basically handing over to me i'm the one who's going to be this sort of making the decision of uh what your appearance is going to be on youtube from now on you know if i decide to cut out a certain clip or decide to edit in a certain way that's down to me now whereas 
before he controlled everything so the fact that he's passed such a major responsibility over to me I was like this is crazy I'm, I'm so thankful I'm so honored I was speechless at first <laughs> well that's it, awesome it, man it, kudos it to you because you're doing you're doing an awesome job at it and uh you know I I think that you know my my hope is that people will hear this and get inspired to get involved with this side of the create creative process because you know there's you know when I do like my creator roundtables the video podcast stuff I do uh, you know I'll have people uh, watch that and they'll say look I you know I don't want to ever be in front of the camera or I don't have equipment but I want to be involved creatively like and I think this is a really cool outlet where if someone is you know has experience with graphic design or editing that or art in general like there's there's outlets and you know I know that's something with that Melissa really enjoys is finding these kind of different ways to engage with a franchise franchise that aren't necessarily playing the games you know it's the, the artistic side of it and I, I think that's great I just I just think it's a really cool uh, way to get engaged creatively with the franchise without you know without it being what you would expect so you know I, hopefully, I agree yeah it's, it's cool the the amount of like, for example, when I was doing the Disney stuff, I would never imagined Disney reaching out to me with Pokemon. Now, a couple of, about a month ago now, I guess, I did a Pokemon inspired G Fuel flavor. Uh, it's currently in my pinned tweet because it got a load of traction, and I was like, oh, wouldn't it be amazing if G Fuel did a, a Pokemon flavor? You know, we're the gamers who are using a lot of energy walking around constantly. Right. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we could do with this. Um, and as soon as I posted it, within a couple of minutes, the partnerships manager for G Fuel commented and was like, "Hey, can you shoot me this in an email and you know tell <laughs> tell me your oh ideas?" Oh my god! And I was like, "That's, That's fantastic!" I was like, "What the hell? <laughs> this is crazy!" <laughs> so you know, I, I sent that all off to him, and you know, he was like, "Let, let me know who you think, uh, what Pokemon YouTubers would be suitable for this sort of thing, for working on it, and." You know, I've let him do his thing with that. That's so, so cool, man. You know, <laughs> whenever someone just says, like, how do I get to, like, the position that you're in? I'm just like, well, if you're doing art, whether it's for Pokemon, whether it's for a completely different topic, whatever, just keep putting it out there. Because the more that it gets shared and the more, you know, likes and things, the more chance you have of, you know, one of these big people... <laughs> noticing it and just saying you know I, we want that we want to be a part of that and I think that's just where I've just got kind of lucky a few times and I just recommend others to do the same I mean when I started doing these simple shiny edits a couple of years ago there was only maybe one or two other people doing it at the time uh, and I think one of them didn't really have a good um, rep because he was uh, a spoofer I think so, so he was sort of making he was sort of giving it a bad look at the time um, because he was making edits and sort of he was trying to pass them off as real and fool people where oh, I was okay. like so in every single one of my posts I was like this isn't real I'm not trying to mislead anyone that's why it's got my watermark on it I'm, you know I'm just trying to say wouldn't it be good to have this and then speed forward to now and you can go on somewhere like Instagram and there's probably about 20 to 30 different accounts now all doing shiny edits um, and putting things together. So I think that's why I've sort of strayed away from that side of making shinies that I want to see. Whereas now I'm just trying to make stuff that is either officially confirmed or just making in-game features that we would like to see because I don't think anyone else is sort of filling that little area just yet of making concept uh, pieces of what the community would like to see you know I see a lot of people coming and saying oh I'd love to see uh, that we could discard eggs or I'd love to see um, a way that we could just press ready when we're queuing for a raid and, and the more I sort of see these comments, I'm like, okay, I'm going to try and put this one together, uh, put it out there, and then that way, you know, if a lot of people like it, maybe a lot of people won't like it, but at least then, you know, people can read through the comments and think, okay, they make a good point, this wouldn't be a good idea.
I love the menu stuff. Like that, like like that. That's the kind of thing you're talking about. Like, yeah, you know, what if you could do this, or what if you could select this, and you you build like a whole menu look. It's like that's what I'm talking about. Like, remember that trainer tips video when he went before PvP, and he's like, hey, this is what PvP could be like, you know. And he had all this this concept stuff. I was like, that's really freaking cool. And uh, I forget what you did not too long ago, but it was something to that effect of you know an in-game feature and i was like yes this is this is cool like and this is how i would want it to look and function you know if it was in the game so that's yeah that's a that's a a cool little uh progression from like creating like a shiny edit or an in-game pokemon edit to kind of this more conceptual uh kind of thing that's really cool yeah uh i, I love it and um, i think more people should get behind it to be honest uh, I know there's a lot of artists out there just trying, even if it's just like, um, even if you're an artist who does illustrations and sketches and things, I think putting these ideas out there visually, you know, for the community to talk about, that will help Niantic as well. Because at the end of the day, you know, we're very quick enough to complain about things as a community, which, you know, is sad. But if we can maybe turn our complaints into constructive criticism and even potentially maybe show them a few ideas of what you know as a community we would like to see i think that's what the way that mantic can work with that and then provide us with the the things that we want i yeah, totally that, agree I mean, with that <laughs> that's that's like so real like exactly so like logical <laughs> yeah it's so logical it hurts but the but the community is salty like me sometimes and they like to complain <clears throat> All the and time. that's why we need that's why we need the good the the good artists and the good souls like you to, uh, to step bounce it you up out. and yeah step it up and and take it for the team. Well, oh, I, don't, don't get I, me wrong. I lo I love to complain as much as the next person, <laughs> but I, I like to sort of try and be constructive though and say like, you know, I didn't enjoy this, but what if next time we could do it like this and have that, and you know, I think that's I think that's the way to do it. Well, that, that like, and when you have a visual element, that takes that kind of expression of you know what if so much further because we could yeah. talk about like oh wouldn't it be cool if you could do this but then when you say what it wouldn't it be cool if you could do this and you have like a visualization of it it seems so much more real and more tactile like that's and that's where I think there, there's a, a big line in the sand of like oh yeah this is real concept work this is real concept art here so I, I definitely definitely dig that. All right, man. As we're wrapping up here, what what are your goals for for 2020? Like your creative goals. Like, are you are you looking to do more video editing stuff? Like, do you want to take on other clients? Like, what what's you have any kind of vision for for your year trajectory going into 2020? I'll be honest with you. For the first time ever, I've actually actually had to start turning down clients because of my schedule being full. That is the best uh, problem to have. <laughs> yeah, I, it is. Um, you know, Mystic definitely keeps me busy. But for 2020, I think just go onwards and upwards, really. Nothing too specific. Yeah, just drive. Just keep. Just stay behind yeah. the wheel. Keep your foot on the gas, man. That's, yeah, you that's, got that's you good got stuff. good motion right now. So just keep <laughs> up the momentum. Anything that just keeps the community going, um, I'll be behind it and trying to do my part. Yeah, that's so great, man. That that's and and you know, make sure everyone. I'll put links in the description to to everywhere we can find you. But why don't you why don't you tell our community where they can find your work, where they can connect with you, Twitter, Instagram, like let us know where. But I'll link it, of course, in the description. Everyone's got to check the, check out Disney Gamer for sure. But where can <laughs> yeah. we find you? Um, well, you can either find me on Instagram or Twitter at Disney Gamer. I'm starting to do a bit of YouTube now. Uh, I'm planning to do some live streams where I actually make some edits live uh, and actually talk to the community while I'm doing it, which oh, I think yes. could be a I fun like process, that. you know. So I maybe do like some streams where like people can say, "Ah, oh, uh, what would this Pokemon look like being shiny?" and I sort of make it there and then. So I, I really, I really want to do that. So I think a lot of people can get involved with that. So feel free to tweet me, message me any ideas that you have, and. Hopefully, we all can work together and see what they see what they can look like. Dude, that's so that's so awesome. That's well, Reese, awesome. thank you so much for coming on the show, man. I really appreciate it, and uh, you're you're doing great work, man. And uh, you know, it's 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 definitely awesome to hear such a 
a unique way to to get involved creatively. I think that's that's really awesome, and I'm sure you inspired a lot of people to uh, to get out there and start messing around with uh with with their creativity. It's awesome. So thank you so much for coming on, man. Yeah, dude, we really appreciate it. Yeah, it was fantastic to meet you. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. You're now part of the fam. Yay. <laughs> Awesome. All right, guys, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to run through the news. Uh, a lot of stuff to talk about, but we'll get through it pretty quick. And then we'll do our uh, Cobalion raid guide and battle party. Whoop, whoop. But all right, Reese, thanks again. And uh, everyone else will be back right after this. And we are back from our break. Thank you guys so much for that. Reese, Disney Gamer, thank you so much for coming on the show. Awesome story, man. Super cool to hear how that kind of snowballed from just making a shiny edit one day to putting himself out there and then get, getting a gig with Mystic 7, man. Cool story. Very cool. I was just saying but like before we came back from the break that I'm kind of in the same boat where... You know, if it wasn't for Ken reaching out to me, seeing my my photos of like the Skylanders and stuff, I wouldn't be here. You know, and you reached out to me, and I jumped on board with the Instagram, and then uh, dude, I jumped and, into the I podcast. Love the fact and that, here we are. Yeah, I love it that he's so from awesome. the Toys to Life kind of thing too, because that's you know, to me and Adam, that's like super important to us so it's super cool to hear yeah. that he has uh you know history with uh with disney infinity because that, that game was fantastic but uh all right we're gonna uh, run through some news real quick we're not gonna be uh spending too much too too much time on it because i do want to have a little bit of a freestyle conversation uh at the end but we've got three updates from PokemonGoLive.com. so this is pretty cool i love getting first party news direct from niantic so i'll run through this stuff really quick and then we'll do our ray guide battle party and have this conversation All right, actually, before we get into the news, a little housekeeping really quick. I do want to give a huge shout out to our show supporter tier patrons, Brittany J, Matt M. Pitts, Terry, David, Chris, Sydney, Bacon, L, The Noise, Harry, Pokey, Nab, Bot, Purple, Pancakes, Dem, Gears, Be Bang, and Lady Goobly Meat, Super Nerd, Fox, Go Ranger, Matt, The Phoenix, Baker Boy, Joel Switch, Alex, The Lester, Silverseer, Jason, Go Live, Andrew, Matt from Kentucky, Paul, Justin, and Val. (sighs) I did it. You got that. Goodness gracious. (laughs) Oh, I know. Melissa, you're up next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah Melissa's week. up you next week. Yeah, right. Oh, and uh, special thanks to Pelo, Pelo Pogo, for joining at the Discord tier. He's now a member hey. of our community and in the Aww. Discord. Yo, it Welcome. is so fucking oh, thanks, awesome buddy. in our Discord our because team. our our AR snapshot, our Go Snapshot channel, is so freaking fire right now because we've got got Bobby Pokemon Snaps, we've got Ash Ketchup, and now we have Pelo Pogo in there all at the same time. Uh, sharing so much shit and then we've got like the phoenix terry wolf shares photos we've got the noise of pogo sharing photos it's 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 really cool that that channel in the server is uh is is, is hot fire now but thanks thank you pillow for joining at the discord teal and uh tier and also a huge shout out to our executive producer paul bot all right three bits of news from pokemongolive.com i'll run through this stuff really quick cobalion our next tier five raid boss november 4th through november 26th this will be our Tier 5 boss. Cobalion, also known as the Iron Will Pokemon. It's part of the Swords of Justice, which is a legendary trio, sort of, of Pokemon. So from the anime movie, uh, Kyurem versus the Sword of Justice kind of told this story about this legendary trio. And this legendary trio is Cobalion, who's kind of like the presumed leader, uh, Terrakion, Verizion, and sort of Keldeo. Keldeo kind of gets adopted by the trio and becomes the fourth member of Sword of Justice, but I guess they push that off to the side because they're going to do something different with Keldeo. Anyway, Steel Fighting Legendary Pokemon, weak to fire, fighting, ground. I like this one. It's a cool design. I think that uh, the, it looks very regal and legendary, similar to like kind of Entei and Suicune, where it has that real kind of triumphant feel to it but uh always exciting to get a new pokemon new new tier five so i'm excited about this adam you you happy about this you like this i mean i like new pokemon yeah i i mean i wish i had keldeo first Heck yeah this guy's awesome so i just like keldeo right, let, let me let me beef on keldeo real quick so the in the lore in the movie right you have these the the swords of justice which were kind of there was an era where men and pokemon had a war 
and the Swords of Justice were kind of the leaders of protecting the Pokemon from the humans, from men. And uh, there was this one scene in the movie where there's a huge, like, forest fire, So, and this forest is completely inhabited by Pokemon. So the three Swords of Justice, Cobalion, Terrakion, and Verizion, are out there trying to save all these Pokemon, and they come across, like, a young Keldeo, kind of lost from his family, injured, kind of, in the fire. And they pick him up, they take him away, uh, and end up, like, adopting him, and ultimately training him in their methods of combat. So what makes this trio really cool is Cobalion, like I said, is the steel fighting type. Terrakion is a rock fighting type. Verizion is a grass fighting type. And then Keldeo comes in as a water fighting type. So the, the balance is really cool. But again, they're, they're calling it a trio, even though it's really a quartet if you throw in Keldeo. But Anyway, but at the end of the show, we'll do a, a raid guide and battle party for Cabalion. But I, I definitely like this. I think that, uh, you know, this this sets the path for, you know, a long time with the trio here because we're going to, you know, we'll have months worth of tier five bosses. So lots to come there. Uh, our research breakthrough. Did you open or did you open yours and get an Eevee before the before? The Hell switch? no, I would did not. I had I, I sat on it one <laughs> extra day because I did not want that flower crown Eevee. I'm so happy that they're gone. Same. But uh, from November 1st through January 1st, so all of November, all of December, our research breakthrough is Articuno, Zapdos, Moltres, Kyogre, Groudon. Recycled Pokemon, yes, but shiny chances every week, good. So I'll, I'll take this. I mean, any of these stand out? Melissa, you, you have a couple of these, right? Like I've traded you... I think I traded you a Mountain Dew Groudon. I think you want the Zap. We want the Articuno. Um, I don't have the Articuno. No, I need the Articuno bad. Yeah, I I never got I the got... shiny Articuno. Do you have the rest of them? That was the one Ray Day that I, yeah. Mm. I, I tried so hard to get it, and I was an hour late for work because I was like, oh, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to do one more, one more, one more. And I did not see the shiny. I'm uh I'm excited because my son has two shiny Articuno, and he's trading me one for a shiny Rayquaza. I'm like, yes, I can get it in a Dex. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Oh, because he can trade yep. now. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. I, oh, I call dibs quick. on that shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, you'll have to you'll That's have to wrong. get a research stamp every day. You have four shots to get an Articuno, so maybe you'll maybe you'll get lucky. <clears throat> yeah, my mine was an Articuno, but it was not shiny. Yeah, I just got a Zapdos, but yeah, it wasn't it's, shiny. Yeah, I, I don't have good luck with. Re- I think I've only had one shiny research. You know, not even special re- or uh, breakthrough. I'm just in general. I've only had one shiny come from research by any way uh, this whole time. So I, I typically don't have good luck with that. Uh, Willow reports are still coming in. Remember, this was kind of happening every two days where they're developing this narrative of what's going on with Team Go Rocket. Uh, Since we last recorded, there was two more reports. Uh, Candela clearly has a history with Arlo, and it seems like they used to be really good friends, and now that they have beef, and he kind of turned was a turncoat, went to Team Rocket, or Team Go Rocket. Uh, it seems like Arlo might have some dirt on Candela or something. They're 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 building this kind of narrative out that there's a lot of weird tension between Arlo and Candela. I really like that. Uh, and then on November first, they came out with another update saying that they were developing something called the Super Rocket Radar. We've only heard Rocket Radar turn you know used to talk about this thing, but this is a Super Rocket Radar which can detect Team Go Rocket hideouts and headquarters. So they're really pushing this thing of. These are going to be grand scale interactions. Something will be happening that's different than just spinning a stop and fighting against a grunt. You know, something will be different when you go to these headquarters versus the hideouts. So that's cool. And uh, it's definitely just a matter of days now before they launch something with Team Go Rocket. Uh, you know, we have that looming shadow special research that they found in the code a couple of weeks ago. Um, it's just, it's got to be coming very, very soon. So, I don't know, three tidbits of news from Pokemon Go Live. It's always good to hear it directly from the first party, so uh, I like that. All right, Adam, why don't you tell me about your Colossal Discovery uh, experience, because you were the only one of the three of us that actually played it on the event day, and uh, I know you have a pretty good uh, report here. So, t- t- tell me, how was it How was it for you? Was it everything you hoped for? Like, let me, let me have it. Um, So, I started out the day, I was on my way to the meetup with my local group 
There's about 20 of us all together. So we had a solid group going nice. out. Um, and 10 minutes before the event started, I tap on a swine up. It's shiny. What? Oh, my God. Yeah, and so I'm like, okay, you know, all right. It's a good start <laughs> to the day. Anticipating that more would be shiny along the way. Um, t- 11 o'clock hits. We all met up at a specific raid that was that had there was a Reggie Rock that had I think once it hit eleven there was like two or three minutes left. So we all just jumped in, immediately did that. And we kinda sped through it for the most part. Some people were already done kinda like at the second or third raid. It was like, What? How how'd you guys do it already? And like they had already stopped right. while everybody else was still like out taking those extra fifteen minutes to grab everything, but Overall, it was a lot of fun. I didn't get a single shiny. <laughs> did it? Did that make it less fun for you, though? It it made it disappointing. Oh, come on! No, 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 no. So, like, hear me out. The if I paid for an event and I didn't get one shiny, I'd be pissed. See, now, now this is where, like, you know, because I saw someone on on Twitter post and they, you know, from Niantic, and they said like. You know, hey, you know, we're always looking to improve. We want constructive re- feedback, whatever, just like Reese was saying. And, like, I don't want to give any negative feedback. Just, like, I don't know. I felt I felt like the event did exactly what Community Day, community day was originally intended for, and that's bringing the community together. And that's what it felt like. Because if we had this long period of time, where all these certain spawns were spawning, it felt more of a community day just with the lack of shinies. But we actually could be a community day. We weren't stressed to like, go, 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 go. It was like, we we went hard for a little while and then we were like, all right, everybody's getting hungry. Let's go take a break. Right. Well, that's the benefit of not having a three hour thing. Like it's seven hours long. You could take a nice little break in the middle if you wanted to. You got plenty of time. Yeah, we all went out. We went all, all went out to lunch or dinner. I don't, I don't even know what time <laughs> it was at that point. But but we and it was so nice to just everybody be relaxed. Was there anyone in your community that was like expecting go fest level spawns? Because that's what that's what seems to be the negative thing online, is people had this expectation of like this is going to be like a go fest in my backyard. This is going to be like the makeup go fest day, and you know people were really hoping for that. Like I I thought it would you know would be something like that, but apparently it wasn't like you know bananas spawns or anything. It was it was kind of nobody really said anything at first, but closer to like when we went out to lunch, it was like noticing that. Everything really was just swine up, sphere, <laughs> yeah, geo <Anon>, dude, <laughs> geo dude. It was like, uh, are there any other Pokemon they're gonna spawn? It, it was a little it, like so like that was a little disappointing. The diversity wasn't there. Yeah, well, and they released shiny Skarmory as part of this event, and the Skarmory was behind research, so it was like there wasn't like Skarmory was one of the main spawns. That would have made it feel more like. A community day or more like something like a go fest where it has a featured pokemon that you're seeing everywhere so it's like all right if anyone's gonna get a shiny yeah, and it's today, like shuckle was right, in there right. aerodactyl was in there so it's like there's already shiny chances between the two so it's those would have been fine not being seen in the wild but having skarmory out there i would have liked that like the research like i, I feel is very quick for the time frame that was given what do you mean? Like able to, you were able to turn it over quickly. Like you were able to complete. Yeah, them? you had seven hours, and somebody did it in the first, you know, hour. That that doesn't. I don't know. I feel like doesn't equate. And they know how to how to span it out. You know what I mean? They can do like a oh, find one Pokestop that you've never spun before. Yeah, that, like that's, that's a big it's a deal. Sidewinder, I'm right. stuck on that. I'm stuck on that. Yeah. And I like I know where there's one on my way home, but that means I have to go to work tomorrow and then get it on the way home so i i can't even do it today um because i have to plan that in here's my experience so i couldn't play on the saturday because i was at work all day but i bought the pass anyway today i went out i met my buddy steven for lunch after lunch we completed the, (laughs) the the research for me i was done in 45 minutes the entire thing soup to nuts three raids Caught all the different Pokemon, evolved all the, the the most tedious part and longest part of that whole research 
was waiting as I was evolving the seven Pokemon of each type, like just sitting there waiting, like everything. It went so quick. Now, I didn't mind it going quick, like because and and the way I liken this is, let's say I was playing a game like Halo, or I was playing a game online that had a piece of DLC, right? And you're gonna pay ten bucks for DLC, and you might get you know two hours of story or something like that. So when you look at it like that. You're paying, you know, eight bucks for a ticket to an event. You're paying, you're playing for eight hours. That's what I'm saying. It's like, it, it's like Adam. Would you not worth it? I get. All right. You know what? Pidgey Grabber wrote in with a great well, email, and I'll talk about this. And he well, poses a question. Well, hold on. Let I'll me come back to you in a second. Let me just let me, wait. Wait. Hold on. Listen. Okay, listen. Okay. He says he wrote this <laughs> long email giving his whole review. Pidgey, thank you so much for for writing that all out. But this is what I took away. This is what I'll quote him. He says, "Quote." In closing, for $8, I expected more like a community day on GoFest scale. It fell short in some places, but overall it was a strong event. Proof is in if someone buys a ticket next time or those who didn't buy this time will go all in next time. It says, my community and community at large bought tickets and got out. That's a success in my book. I wouldn't really change much for an $8 price tag. 10 out of 10, Pidgey grab it out. Pidgey, thank you, for, thank you for writing in. Adam, would you pay 8 bucks again to do a similar thing? No. Oh, wow. And that no, and that's that's a hard no, honestly. Interesting. For for my wow. community like and so you know how I was on the fence. My community man. made sure that like I went. And I appreciate that so much and it's just one of those I don't think that I would like I would just go to hang out with everybody, but I wouldn't spend the $8. I would yeah, join people, but I wouldn't play. I'd play alongside because everybody's out, but I wouldn't spend the $8 for it. But then you're also getting a Unova stone, which for some people it was their first one. You got uh, an avatar pose, which, by the way, is like the most strange, unnatural, weird looking, like your spine is fucked up kind of pose. It's really it's really weird. My favorite is the meme know. with the x-ray of the spine like doing like an S. Yes. Yeah, reversal. Yeah, it's I the saw funniest that. shit. I saw that. So, so good. I think Ad Rock in our Discord, he's rocking the uh, the Pikachu onesie on his avatar. And I he's got the it. Uh, he's in that pose. <laughs> I literally But with that pose, your, your avatar's legs are spread a little bit. So he's got the Pikachu onesie on and you see part of the Pikachu onesie's tail, like hanging out between your legs. So it's the, f- it, dude, oh, yes. it is so fucking funny. He's like, I don't know if they play tested this if they- <laughs> quality control. Notice this. Cause it looks like a little like Pika peen, you know, sticking down. So fucking funny. Well, but, uh, okay. So, so my takeaways were just like, you know, out of the 16 Reggie raids that I did, the hundreds of Pokemon caught and the 35 to 40 research tasks that I did, I should have at least gotten one shiny. That's just that's just what I'm saying. I feel that's my just what pain, I'm saying. Adam. And I no and I feel no and I literally was saying to myself, I feel like a Melissa right now. <laughs> <laughs> but the event in 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 total allowed for so much community interaction and it was nice seeing, you know, there were just people like one off people just kind of like strolling in and being like, "Hey, you guys do the raids yet?" And it's just like, "Yeah. Okay, join jump in, like let's go," you know, and it's like there was so much like helping out. It was just, it was fantastic. And it's like, that couldn't be, that couldn't have happened without having this event, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, Definite mixed vibes online. You know, and I don't know if, uh, if that'll kind of, yeah. And so this is the the whole positive, you know, feedback that I'm trying to get to here, you know, and it's like, (laughs) you know, and unlike normal rating groups, you could slow down. It wasn't like, oh, we got to get to the next one. Let's go, go, go. I mean, there are some, there are some people that did that, but. I, I don't like it, that's not how the day was you know it was just we were there to enjoy everybody's company and that's exactly what we did good and what I learned good. from this is a this type of event was awesome but please don't make it an every other month or monthly thing like community day because we want they it to still feel monthly. special yeah because yeah. this was special yes like I do I do feel that it was special it did its job in doing that but crank up the the diversity of spawns and shiny rate just a hair just a hair because i would have liked well, that's at least the, get one that's the good just thing that they, they, they will listen you know what i mean like they but do just want, one I'm sure that they'd one i would if i walked away with any of the reggies that were shiny or the skarmory i would have been fine 
I would have been happy. Yeah. It, and then it's... B, if you can take anything from this, like use this event to help make community days be just that community days. I know lowering shiny rates sounds bad, but like people still had fun, didn't they? Yes. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just, I know I'm slightly. Okay. But if we made <laughs> community day just a little bit longer, like if it was four hours versus the three and then lower the rate a little bit. Yeah. So, so it's like, yeah, you could still grind and grind and grind and grind and grind and get a whole bunch, but not as many as you would in the three hours. If you grind and grind and grind and grind and grind. But this way here, it feels a little bit more, you can, you can stop and go get something to eat. Cause you can enjoy yourself more. Or if they split it up where it was like a 12 to two and then a four to six. So you're hitting two different time periods. So like if you could yeah. grind really hard for those two, but then you could play and like hang out with your friends for the other like half hour to an hour that you could get with the other side, something like that. Those are just my thoughts. Oh, I, I think it's, it's yeah. And, and Melissa didn't play. So no. she'll, you know, she'll, she'll wait it out for, for, uh, an EX Reggie Gigas, I guess. Yep. But I feel like the event, honestly, is it was just like a somebody turned the the dial up on the event that's going on right now. You know what I mean? Like that's it. It's but just kind of like. Eh. Well, I I think we uh, again we're always setting the expectation and the bar too high because Niantic doesn't say it's going to be any of that, but we just expect it. You know what I mean? So it's like it, it is a little bit of a. You have to self-regulate and and keep those expectations kind yeah, of. Yeah, and I didn't I didn't check. have any expectations going into this. All I knew is that the Reggies could be shiny, and like that's kind of what I was going for. And like, yeah. that's I didn't even look at any spoilers or anything. I just went, opened my game up, and had fun. Good, good. Well, I'm I'm glad. I just I, I'm. It's interesting that you wouldn't do it again. Uh, that's uh. That's pretty, I, that's pretty like, And I wouldn't I wouldn't pay the $8 to do it again. I would go and hang out with everybody because it was yeah, an just experience. Pay. Yeah, because your odds of... Your, it's not like your odds increased of getting the, the shiny. My odds of getting a shiny did not increase. There was no... So, like the spawns, and, you're, and you're the shiny master. Magnet. The shiny magnet. But still, right. even, what, you know, I should have you a shiny the ticket magnet, or not, right? I don't. But whether you did, you have the ticket or not, those those raids are still there. Yeah, exactly. So it's not like, you know, exactly. You still do the raid, Nothing still changed. Raid. I could have yeah, bought exactly. one of like the raid pass bags and gotten like extra incubators and stuff and like been able to hatch eggs and do that. Oh, no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, but then you wouldn't have Regigigas or the Scoliosis pose. I don't need either of those. <laughs> <laughs> but you are right. right. Well, you are right in the sense of where all I the wouldn't Reggie, have been so able Reggie to take, is the coolest one. take my, my yeah. AR photo. So, like, there's that. I will say yeah, that you did. Adam did put together some kick-ass AR photos, so check out our Instagram. And I did those uh, that, all that did, day too. You so did a great was... job on that. <laughs> but write into us info at luredup.com. Let us know how what you thought of the colossal discovery. If you took advantage of uh, playing on the day itself, if you're waiting it out. Now, interesting enough, I'm sure if you don't complete it by tomorrow when the actual event ends the tasks are supposed to change. So keep an eye out on social to see what those change to, because they're going to make it less raid dependent because the Reggies are going away after this weekend. So obviously you're not going to have to catch some of the Reggies rewards remain the same tasks will change. Let us know what you think. Info at lured All right. One more email. This one from overseer, Justin, it's a little bit of longer email, but he put together a tweet last week and I fucking loved it and it blew my mind. So Cybertron, right? This is the guy that Aaron Zhang, who is, he was shoutcasting the Pokemon Go Invitational at Worlds along with Trainer Tips Nick. He puts a tweet out saying that he's accepted, like he's getting his dream job and he's accepted a position working for Axiomatic. Axiomatic owns Team Liquid. Team Liquid does big esports thing. They do big productions. So he's going to be doing professional commentary in the esports realm. That's all he really said. Now, I'm going to read Justin's email here and then I'm going to recap it. This is what he says, and it's a little bit long. He says, okay, I want to preface this by stating that Niantic and the Pokemon company has to be pulling strings somewhere. He goes, I mean, with Axiomatic investing into Niantic, Aaron Zhang having accepted a job offer with Axiomatic, Aaron Zhang having worked on the Pokemon company on several VGC pod projects, and being color commentator for the first ever Pokemon Go tournament hosted at DC, it has me thinking, how deep does this rabbit hole go? What if there are connections that go further? 
Aaron working with Nick on a YouTube channel about Pokemon Go, where both Trainer Tips and Liz George have both confirmed they talked about suggest and suggested topics for YouTubers that Niantic works with personally. With King, Poke AK both being featured at the inaugural tournament where they were personally invited by the Pokemon Company, who also have their own audiences on YouTube. King and Poke AK also work closely with Nick, and in the past they're pushing heavily for Pokemon Go PvP as an esport, and these content creators pushing for Sylph tournaments as the focus of PvP across the world. Tinfoil hats, tinfoil hats for everyone. He goes, also, I fell, I fell deep into this rabbit hole. It's dark, damp, and I think I found where Elvis has been hiding. Thank you, <laughs> the overseer. Uh-huh. So this is a great fucking conspiracy theory. So Aaron Zhang, he's an accomplished commentator. Axiomatic was part of Niantic's Series C funding, where they invested heavily into Niantic. Axiomatic, again, working in esports production, could this Aaron Zhang saying he accepted a job with Axiomatic mean that this is going to be some kind of Niantic connection where they're going to be pushing esports for Pokemon Go? Ooh. It's a great fucking conspiracy theory because a lot oh, of things line it. up. It's really cool. It was it, it, it triggered a great conversation on YouTube. Let us know what you think because it, it kind of, like I, I picture like, you know, the cork board with like the colored string connecting all the dots, you know, of, of all this stuff happening. And uh, I would absolutely love to see this be something around Pokemon Go kind of, you know, and the Go Battle League. It's just very timely that all this stuff is happening at once. So definitely keep the tinfoil hat, hat on and uh, we'll keep an eye on this for sure. All right. So I got a couple I got a couple voicemails here and um, I want to play them for you. So the first one is from Jolt Switch, one of our patrons, uh, who's also a podcaster and a creator. Um, definitely uh, all around good guy and, and good hearted and uh, is into the franchise a ton. And uh, yeah, let's listen to his voicemail. Hey, guys, Jolt Switch here. Just finished your podcast this week. Always good to hear about all the fun. And I was really glad to hear from the trainer club as well. Adam, you got a shiny ghastly. That's pretty cool. I'm going to be honest, though. I think my uh, fiancé got you better. My buddy got married up last weekend, and uh, his favorite, he is Gasly. He definitely wants that shiny. We went out to the Montreal Safari Zone with him, and that's all he wanted all day long. Never got it. Guess what Roxy got at his wedding? That shiny Gasly. He, he is a little bit, uh, a little bit chuffed about that. Anyway, hey, guys, have a great day, and... Uh, Keep, I'll keep listening. I'll keep tuning in. Have a good one. So, that, Joel Switch, thanks for writing in or yeah. calling in. That That's pretty funny. Uh, dude, Ghastly is like one of the most in-demand yeah. shinies out there. Everybody yep. wants the fucking shiny Ghastly. So, it's like, and I got one at GoFest. Yeah, like when I, I remember when you got one like, at oh. GoFest. I was pissed. Yeah, that Everybody and Krabby, like I, couldn't, I could not get at GoFest. I went yeah. around and around. But now you're good. Now I'm good. Yeah, All right, we got another me. voicemail. <laughs> you know, not Melissa doesn't catch enough fucking Pokemon. She was like, we we're out the other day. You're, you're you're clicking on Pokemon. She's like, I'm never gonna catch a fucking shiny. I'm like, you not with that have attitude. Catch, you have to you have to click on more positive vibes. It's a numbers Melissa, game. It's a positive numbers vibes game. only. Oh goodness. <laughs> All right, next voicemail. This one is from Baker Boy. Okay, guys, it's uh, Baker Boy here from Australia. Just listen to your latest podcast about the colossal discovery. I wanted to add my two cents, put my voice into our little community. I think it is totally fucked up that <laughs> you guys get to pay $8, but over here in Australia, it is $13. How <gasps> no one can even imagine that they can get away with anything like this. It's just a total joke. I will not be spending another cent in, in this game. I just don't understand why <laughs> they can even possibly do this. The exchange yeah. rate doesn't even add up. I just, it's a joke. Anyway, <sighs> love, the sh- love the show. You guys do an amazing job. And that's all I've got to say. I will not be participating in this, in this event. And if Niantic is listening, we've got to get that together. They're making <laughs> as much money as 25 million population of Australia to 300 million population of America. They're just mm-hmm. money gathering. A billion dollars is not enough. Yeah, get over yourselves, guys. <laughs> Think about the community. That's what the game 
based on. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much, Baker Boy. Yeah, Baker that. Boy, thank, that voice thank you for that. All right, so he That's sent me a screenshot up, of. L- listen to this. It's it. The, the exchange rates are so fucked up. So he sends a screenshot. He posted in the Discord of hit what his, it looks like in his store, and then I posted what it looks like in my store. So, you know, the first thing, the hundred Poke Coins or whatever, both ninety nine cents. Okay, they're both the same cost, a dollar, right? But then as the Poke Coin tiers go higher and higher, it starts pulling away where he's overpaying so much more as the packages get bigger. Giggity. So by the time he's at like the, you know, our one, you know, 99.99 Poke Coin bundle, it's in Australia. That same bundle is 169.99. What? Yeah. Wow. Like that. So, what? So hundred and sixty nine dollars, you know, so hundred and so we're bitching about the eight dollar oh ticket, right? We're all bitching about the eight dollar ticket. His it was thirteen dollars for him. Well, listen, so it's like, listen, that's so stupid. You didn't miss much. <laughs> Hot take, well, but still, it's just look. Look, I understand there's different exchange rates, but the scaling just doesn't make sense. Like really, like that's just so bizarre, and I don't know if that's kind of across the board in Australia with, with other games, Clash of Clans and all that. I don't know if it's kind of follows that same thing where it's so much more than here in the U.S., but it's fucked up, man. That is, it's like you got to... Yeah. Uh, I remember when the game first came out, there was people that would change their location, like use like a VPN, change their location, log into like the U.S. store, buy coins, <laughs> and you know, at the U.S. rate, and then, you know... Uh, buy their shit and they load it back into their you know their their native country but it's so fucked up like wow, i get it i get so this frustration up. i i think that uh what was great about the voicemail was just the the australian flair <laughs> get over yourself <laughs> it's like yes that's so funny <laughs> so so good but guys thank you so much for uh calling in I'll, I'll make sure i drop the uh the phone number at the end of the show if you guys want to call in and have your voicemails played on the show all right Let's wrap this up, guys, with a Cobalion raid guide and battle party. Whoop whoop! That's right, I said it. Adam, do you? A what? Wait, you, but we gotta get to, we gotta get together. We gotta actually be a Adam, team. You gonna, we gotta do this. You gonna, you gonna start oh it? Go ahead. I'm gonna start it. Okay. Battle party. Whoop whoop! whoop battle, battle party. party. Whoop whoop whoop! Yeah! Oh my god! Wow! <laughs> wow! Van Halen in the wow. room. All right, guys, this is coming like from PokemonGoHub.net. Uh, weak to fire, fighting, and ground Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon Go Hub says that it can be trioed or maybe duoed. So we'll, we'll have to pay attention to see if, if this can actually be done. Uh, maybe, uh, you know, the, some of the short man uh, YouTubers can, can knock this out. We'll have to follow that. Uh, but it doesn't have the greatest stats, so it is, that's why it is easier. 192 attack stat, 229 defense stat, 209 uh, hit points. The attack stat sucks, so it's not that, you know, it's not going to be too much of a threat uh, to go against. But, Adam, you want to run through some of the counters here? The best one is, which you need the Unova Stone for, is Chandelure with Fire Spin Overheat. And then you've got Blaziken, Machamp, Moltres, Breloom, and Entei as well falling behind as the six top counters. There's some bunch of counters, too. Heatran, uh, which has good resistance. Flareon, Groudon, Garchomp. I really want to run Chandelure, man. I just don't have one. I have, like, I one fucking Litwick yeah, that I got yeah, from I the uh, special research. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, I, I've got a couple. I, I d- but Max Max Catch CP is going to be 1727, and with Boosted and Snowy or Cloudy, it's going to be 2159. Yeah, the, uh, the movesets, it can learn Metal Claw or Zen Headbutt on fast moves. Charge moves, it can learn Stone Edge, Close Combat, or Iron Head. Uh, I think GoHub said that Metal Claw, Iron Head is the most challenging moveset so pay attention to that obviously it'll get stab uh both sides for that yeah i think three to five trainers should be able to knock this out pretty pretty easily um i put together a very basic ass party like i said i wanted to bring the chandelure i just don't fucking have one so i'll bring two blaziken two machamp two moltres and keep it moving (laughs) pretty basic melissa what about you melissa went even more basic than i do yeah i I did because i really don't have like i Believe it or not, I don't even think I have a good Machamp. So, three Moltres and three Entei. Nice and easy. Light it up. Fire it up. 
And then I'm going to bring my Hundo Squad. Of course bring... you're going to bring the Hundo Squad. <laughs> my Entei, Rapidash, Ninetales, Flygon, Rhyperior, and Golem. See, but that's that's like the total flex, you know, yeah. flex party. That's what I was going to so, do. So, I get well, it. Well, I don't have I like 100% it. of any of those, except for the Entei. So, he's he's leading the leading the pack. Let us know what you guys are going to bring to Cobalion. Uh, it's always fun. I know that communities typically light up in that first week of uh, a new new raid Pokemon. So I'm sure if you want to get out there and raid, now's the chance because you'll have uh, a new Pokemon out there. People can be excited. Discords will be popping off. So post those raids. All right, little co- a couple bits of miscellaneous news here before we get into our conversation and wrap up. Uh, the November box sale is live. Uh, Ultra Box, 17 raid passes, two super incubators, three lucky eggs, and ten max potions. I am still fucking. On they're still max doing potions it. galore. They're still max doing it. Revives. What? No, stop. Just, just stop. Just fucking stop with the with the consumables. Please stop like that. All right. The adventure box: twelve super incubators, three lucky eggs, four incubators, ten max potions. Again, don't know why they're putting max no, potions give, in yeah, there. Give it's me insulting. Another incubator. Stop. Just give me one more one. incubator. Give me one. I like that they're putting lucky eggs back in the bundles. That's good. Give me another lucky egg. Like I understand you may want to have, you know that uh, that additional item, like the fourth item in the box. But why fucking potion? Like how how many? How I'm I'm so tired of talking about this. Stop giving us berries. Stop giving us potions. Stop. Just fucking stop. Hate that shit. Give me the incense. Something something better that's not you that you're not just gonna get from spinning a stop. Like, why pay for that? I don't want to have to pay for that. You're forcing me to pay for something that I can get just simply by committing and playing with my time, paying with my time. That's not fair. Are you doing what with your time? Not fair, man. What? said doing what with your time? Playing. I'm paying with my time. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. All right. So take a quick Go Ranger check-in. What's up, everybody? It is Go Ranger Matt, and this is the Go Ranger Check In. Chim Shark Community Day next Saturday, November 16th, two Saturdays from now, 11 to 2 local time. Don't forget to utilize the checklist feature on Go Ranger. I, I've been using the shit out of this with all the new shinies that they've been releasing, and also I keep track of my shadow Pokemon and purified Pokemon. Fantastic custom checklist feature on Go Ranger. Make sure you check that out. Before we wrap up, let's have this conversation. You guys, if you're not aware of the situation that happened with Pokemon Master Holly, I'll recap it and kind of go around the room here and get everyone's take on it. So she puts a post up on Twitter. She's in her Team Rocket Avatar cosplay. The costume itself is like a one to one one to one direct perfect fucking representation of the Avatar outfit. It's totally legit. Little mini skirt, you know, big knee high boots. Um, you know, the hat, Team Rocket shirt, the whole nine. She looked great. So in this Twitter post, she says, hey, you guys like cosplay? Visit my Patreon to see more. You know, there's plenty more on my Patreon. So it blows up her fucking Patreon. So many people join. They're like, oh, shit, she's wearing a miniskirt. I want to see, you know, I want to see the pictures. That's really what happened. So all these people go to Patreon. And on her Patreon, she has these pictures that could be considered provocative or suggestive. Now, you guys didn't get a chance to see it. I saw them. No. I didn't think they were that bad. But in all honesty, when I first saw it, I was like, I had that oh shit moment. Like, oh shit. Well, this is I'm going to be like, honest. Off character. The second I saw her post advertising to even go to the Patreon page, I knew she was fucked. I knew she was yeah. fucked. Like it was because well, <laughs> she, the, she was laying on her side in a super sexy pose. She could have chose to pose any other way. She could have posed super cute standing in front of anything. Standing. She was laying on a bed on her side and she was like, check out my Patreon to see more. She completely suggested to it. Suggested, right? And she right, set right. herself okay. up. And I and I hate to be like that because I loved it. I thought it was super I when I saw the picture I was like, that's awesome. She looks kick ass. She's fucked. But and I felt bad <laughs> for her because yeah, no. like she did look awesome and like she does have that edge to her, but she 
put herself in a position to be family friendly. And thank God I didn't do that because, you know, you you can't. She set, she set herself up, unfortunately. Like, I don't think her intention was to do that in any way. And it sucks real bad that that happened. But she I don't think she really took a second to think it through. Or she was thinking it through and she was like, fuck this. This is the, part the of risk me. Reward. I'm going for it. Yeah, I'm going for it because yeah, I mean, knowing, I have to own this that and I'm going blow. to grow as a person and people are going to need to accept that. Yeah, which, and that knowing the that case, that's going to blow up her Patreon, I mean... Yeah, she knew... You got to take care of yourself. She knew you know what, what she mean? was doing. That po- yeah. When she posted that picture of her laying on the side saying, check out more on my Patreon, she knew exactly what she was doing. All right, well, the... The post was up for a very short amount of time, right? The post gets pulled down. She puts up another post on Patreon saying, hey, guys, I'm in trouble. Niantic saw my post. They didn't like it. They said that it does not, it's not in line with their family-friendly guidelines. Uh, stay tuned. You know, I'll let you know if I'm going to be able to continue doing this. I'm walking on eggshells. And when I saw that, I go, oh, fuck. She really is fucked. And... She took like a week off of YouTube. She was away with Nick from Trainer Tips. They were traveling. Um, You know, like she just kind of took a breather. And on the 30th of October, so it's been a couple days already, she actually reposted and said, hey, guys, I am allowed to post some pictures here, but uh, per Niantic's guidelines, I can only post non-lewd and non-suggestive photos as per Niantic's family-friendly rules. Now, this is what I want to talk about here. The costume was exact one-to-one. So it's clearly not about the costume. It's not about the fact that she's wearing a miniskirt, right? Because what she didn't up re-upload was like, there was this kind of like over-the-shoulder kind of booty shot, which, you know, was still artistic and tasteful. It wasn't like she's fucking showing her ass or anything like that. You know what I mean? She's wearing clothes, but definitely it doesn't matter a little if bit you're more wearing so- clothes when you're when you're a public figure like that. It's the face. The, it, it the was suggest- the face. Whatever the su- yes. suggestion that the that the every image puts off a feeling, plain and simple. Yes. And it all yep. is going to go by your pose and your face. And it's the face. Pose and her face yeah. said sex for one blink of an eye. Because honestly, the, the the picture that she posted was like, uh, promoting the Patreon page said sex to me. And it wasn't even that bad. But it's the fact that you're laying on the bed in you're laying on the bed and you're all curvy in a cute little outfit. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. It is what it is. Like, no, it's a, it's a great conversation. And there, it was very active on her Patreon. People supporting her, obviously. But it's she looks amazing. I, don't get yeah, me wrong. Were, she looked were, amazing, and, and I wish and I wish she had the creative freedom to be able to post those pictures and not have to worry about that sh- shit. You know, like that sucks that she's kind of stuck in that little tiny in that box now. You know, like yeah, you know, I hope she can find a balance where she can express herself creatively like that and be able to show that part of her personality without having those kind of repercussions eventually in the future. Yeah. This is something that she posted when she did the repost. She wrote this on uh, on her Patreon, and I thought this was, you know, still pretty pretty edgy. And you know, but she did write this, and she said, "quote The only thing I was sponsored for in 2019 was Go Fest in Chicago, so dealing with Niantic is not worth the money. However, I do know the news and what's going on to happen in the game usually a day in advance. So yeah, she's still working with Niantic to the fe- to the con- you know to the effect of." She's getting news early. She's on NDA. She can, you know, she can, she, she's in the know when it comes to uh, the media and the game. But the only actual sponsored thing she's done all year, even though she's been to every fucking event, was Go Fest Chicago. So it's just a, you know, I'm glad that she reposted. I'm glad she's still able to work with Niantic. I'm glad she's still able to, you know, express herself creatively with this stuff, even though she had to, you know, hold back some of the photos because they, they were suggestive. But I want to know what everyone thinks here because the people in our Discord community were up in fucking arms. They were like, this is bullshit. You know, she should be able to do this. It's it's on her Patreon. It's behind a paywall. It's not out in the public. Um, it's not over-sexualized. But it's not it's nude. the way she publicly 
I do. I get it. it. I, I know. I if know. She, if I she know. had, if she had put just a regular, like a picture of her in the cosplay costume in any kind of normal Pokemon setting, and said, "Hey guys, to check out more on my Patreon," and didn't it? It's all because it completely alluded to a sexual theme right yeah, from the well, get go. And and it, it opened up the conversation in our Discord of how all of the female characters in the Pokemon world, even when like when you're on fucking like Route One and you come across a bug trainer or something like that that you're battling, they're wearing short little skirts or a little crop top. Like the, all the women are very very sexualized of the Pokemon franchise. They just they are they are they are. So it's yeah the new water you know, gym leader. Yeah, well, exactly, and you know, and we've seen you know employees of the Pokemon Company cosplaying as Nessa, which shows a ton of skin, but again, not suggestive in the face or setting. That's yes. the difference. Yeah, yep. that's that's completely different. So, how you know, I I reached out to Holly. Uh, you know, I was like, "Yo, we got your back." You know, um, I hope everything will be okay. You know, let us know if we could help. Do you want to? You know, like I'd love to talk to you about it. So, she is going to be coming on the show again. Um, you know, I don't know how soon we're going to be able to get her scheduled. I do have some some slots open in December. I told her if she wanted to talk about this, maybe we'd do a uh, little bonus episode or something like that. But um, she's in good spirits, and I'm I'm super glad that it worked out where she can you know maintain the relationship with Niantic because I was like, fuck, man, I I, I would hate for this to be the fucking thing that kind that of that break her, yeah, yeah that yeah, broke her man, career, like sucked. some stupid fucking cute pictures, like give me a well, break. Well, and especially because she she has the gig with Samsung, and oh, you know, we didn't even really talk about this that when the the series C round of funding that we were talking about with Axiomatic, you know, investing in Niantic, Samsung Ventures had a massive investment in Niantic as well, so that's very timely that Samsung is partnering with Axi. You know, it's just. There's a lot of moving parts. Well, lots kind of, of lots together. of strings being attached yeah, and pulled. Yeah. The marionette is moving. But guys, let us know what you what you feel about this Holly situation. Um, you know, we're definitely going to have her on to talk about it uh, in the near future. But let us know what you feel, or if you saw the photos and and what you thought about it. It's just a very interesting situation because we've talked about it a lot here. We're we're the only podcast that that curses really in the Pokemon Go space. You know, and the, you know, that was like a huge thing that Melissa had to convince me like tooth and nail to, to go to. An, that. And I thought you th- did. That it was the thing that was going to crush us and keep us. I know. And, no, and it, was the, have, it was the opposite. You have to stay true you know? to yourself at all times. Yeah. Where I, when, I, you know, I probably didn't swear once in this entire episode, but, you know, fuck, man. Like, <laughs> <laughs> there you go. This is this is who we are. You know, it's. But the, the Pokemon human. on YouTube and in social media, I mean, like, our social media is completely clean. Like, that's kind of the difference, too, is we have a massive social media presence on Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff. But it's always clean. We're not posting any profanity or anything like that or suggestive anything on social media. That helps us, you know, maintain that kind of credibility because we're not out there, you know, saying fuck this, fuck that on social media, even though we're saying fuck this, fuck that on the show. You know, it's it's totally it's totally different. It's very sanitized. So anytime you have any little bit of inkling of of kind of, you know, that risque, it's like, yeah, I I, I felt it too, Melissa. I was like, the second I saw it, I was like, oh, shit. You know? yeah. yeah, I was like, it, honestly, honestly, I, honestly, I, I was saw like, it and I was like, oh, okay, what am I cute. missing? She's screwed. <laughs> oh, no. But good conversations, guys. Thank you so much. That's a show. We did it. We made it to the end. If you're still listening, we really, really do appreciate you. It means a ton. Yeah, if you made it this far. Yes, we really do appreciate it. But MVP. email us, just like Pidgey Grabba and uh, Overseer, Illustrious Overseer did uh Info at LuredUp.com. Check out LuredUp.com for everything that we're doing. Check out PokemonProfessor.com. Yes, leave us more voicemails. That's fun. I love I love listening to the voicemails. And uh, just like Baker Boy, it's it's good to like just let it out. You know what I mean? Like, look, we 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 are the voice. We are you know we will let you express yourself. Like we always try to keep things positive. But I know that people have real feelings. You want to express them and air that shit out. I'll give you a platform. You know what I mean? Let us just like Baker boy, let us know how you feel. If you know, if you're passionate about something, I want to hear about that. And uh, you know, we want to play it on the show. So definitely leave us more voicemails. That was, that was a lot of fun. We really did appreciate that. But uh, other than that, you guys, uh, guys got anything? Just that I wouldn't 
pay the eight dollars again. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna give you eight bucks next time. I wish you. Could well, no, no, it. my community did that for me, so like I didn't, but like You're so nice. I I just. Yeah, no, seriously, I appreciate my community. Like they are <laughs> they are a family. It's it's fantastic to be a part of. Rochester Radio right. Group. You guys rock. Well guys, thank you so much for checking us out. Um, make sure you check check us out next week for more Pokemon Go goodness. Keep training trainers. Bye. We'll see y'all next week. Bye bye.